Surely, Chestnut is a garbage Pokemon. It's always been a garbage Pokemon, and it will continue to be a garbage Pokemon. There's no magic damage theory or strategy outlook that can be applied to Chestnut and then make us realize, oh wait, it was actually good all along, and it can be really good in Generation 9? Oh boy, this is... This has actually been one of the wilder rides. I thought we capped it with Inteleon, but no. Chestnut has some shenanigans behind it, and that is what we're going to be breaking down. But it all started on me just going, what am I supposed to do with this Pokemon? I haven't even looked at it in over eight years. Wow, January 11, 2015, Omega Ruby Sapphire. So I was like, okay, maybe we can take an idea here and then start to work from it. Problem, Power Up Punch just is not a move. Everyone's talking about the Generation 8 Thanos snapping. Now a couple moves got axed in Generation 9. Power Up Punch cannot be selected in battle. That kind of sucks because that seems like at least a decent chestnut move set to where you go Assault Vest, Power Up Punch, if you survive and like you're a three hit KO, Drain Punch, and now you're just like winning and you're just tanky as well. So let's get back to that, kind of break it down, modernize it, see what's going on, max out the hit points, max out the attack, Adamant Nature, 64 isn't really like a speed creep or anything, but I mean, that just seems like a strong, competent Pokemon that will survive things outside of Generation 9, because my goodness, Power Creep is outrageous. 150 hit points, 100 attack, 115 defense. 88 hit points, 122 defense, 107 attack. So like, negligible. Doesn't even matter amount higher of like attack and defense compared to Don Dozo. And what about Garganasol? 100, 100, 130. 88, 107, 122. How's that even fair, man? How's that even, like, acceptable? Also, Garganasalt has a busted ability and incredible move pool with one of the strongest signature moves ever in Pokemon. So you're thinking, like, okay, yeah, Chestnut's just terrible. But then you, if you realize it, Chestnut's kind of like a diet Garganasalt? And if we had that back in Generation 6, maybe there was some power there. Also, if we're a 3-hit KO Pokemon because we're maxing out the hit points, we're going for Assault Vest, we have natural sustain inside of the Drain Punch, we can make the 107 work. Like, does 107 hit some kind of magical damage theory breakpoint to where we don't need the Life Orb to, like, convert anything, we're not going for 1-hit KOs anyways, this just 2-shots everything, and because of that, that means we're getting 50% of our hit points back, and then we're just, like, keeping all of this extra durability. So we're actually like a 4-hit KO Pokemon that also finds KOs and can still like coverage out or utility. Okay, it's not that crazy. We're not 2-hit KOing Silvalli with a neutral hit. But then it gets kind of weird because 107 attack, stab 75 base power move, one-shots Meowskareda. Now it is a super effective hit, but that means 7670 just gets 2-tapped by the Chestnut. Now let's say like... Terra Grass and an 8080 Pokemon, which again, like we're seeing a lot of weird stuff inside of Pokemon, and maybe like Mega Evolutions kind of made it tricky for Chestnut to do something in Generation 6, Generation 7, because like you get a little bit more defense or stat buffs on some of those Pokemon. But with like modern Pokemon, we're seeing a lot of uh, Paradox Pokemon, a lot of like crazy sweeping Pokemon being justified because they have like crazy low defenses, but 8080 has a high chance to hit KO, so anything on this bulk gets two-shot by the 107 attack Drain Punch from the Chestnut. And it's also one of those weird things, like why a 130 attack Pokemon isn't going to one-shot with the Life Orb on the neutral, because that's just how damage th theory works. A two-hit KO is a two-hit KO, and Chestnut finds it in some of those. Now, it could also be that Chestnut was terrible, but isn't terrible now because we do have Terra fighting. We can push more damage into it, and now, wait a second, are we are we catching up to Soul Valley? Are we catching up to the 95-95 just with a 30% damage increase? Okay, so you go Terra fighting Chestnut, you actually remove a lot of your weaknesses, and then you just two-shot everything while healing for half the damage. Diet Garganasalt might not be so bad after all, but we still got a lot more to go through, so if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your friends, and comment your thoughts on the insanity. Was Chestnut slept on in previous generations? I'm thinking maybe not just because of the weaknesses. Like, this thing was just way too weak to everything, and the only ideas, like the modern strategy theory of, like, bring six, pick three, to where you only have, like, 
a core of three Pokemon and then three tech Pokemon. Maybe if you just built like five really strong and then sat Chestnut at the very bottom and just like the ultimate counter pick of, you know what, like I can handle one of these super effective moves, not flying though. And maybe that was also another problem where it's like, yeah, Talonflame was everywhere. Chestnut cannot exist when Talonflame is just a very prevalent Pokemon. So that's unfortunate. But like, was there a team build? Was there a way, even in 6v6, to kind of make the anti whatever Chestnut is weak to team and then actually put it into a position where it could like 3v1 the end of the game. Or again, grass plus whatever, just having too many weaknesses. We also have the bulletproof hidden ability, which gives us straight up immunity to a lot of moves. Now, the weird thing is bulletproof isn't on like the craziest of Pokemon. Okay, it's like on Ursaluna. And I think there's actually some good amount of viability here because if you're not running Guts, which is very viable on the Ursaluna, uh, you just run the bulletproof and then now... Maybe they try to throw like a seed bomb at you because it's a super effective hit on the ground and then they lose the game because Ursaluna just got a free turn or something. But then on the other Pokemon that get bulletproof, not really like crazy viable. Double never really took off. It can also just run fluffy. Komo'o, one of the worst pseudo legendary Pokemon competitively. And then Chestnut, which is weak to everything. So bulletproof, really good, but it's not on any Pokemon. So you don't really know how it interacts or what it works with. Acid Spray. Good. Aura Sphere. Good. Bullet Seed. Focus Blast. Gyro Ball. Pollen Puff. Pyro Ball. Wait. Wait a sec. Like, what kind of madness happened to where after the existence of Chestnut, the Fire Starter signature move is immune by the Grass type starter Pokemon? Okay. Rock Blast. Rock Wrecker. Searing Shot. Seed Bomb. Shadow Ball and Sludge Bomb. Those are big. Weather Ball, maybe, and then no one uses Zap Cannon unless it's like a meme, but you can immune the meme. That's kind of funny. Oh yeah, quick note. Why isn't Moonblast immune by Bulletproof? Does it mean that Komo'o just beats every fairy special attacking Pokemon? I think that's fair because Komo'o has shown to not be that great. Why, why has it been added to the list? It just doesn't make sense. So a move that actually gives you immunity to a subclass of moves that's fairly common because those moves are just good and just tacked onto a lot of Pokemon. All right, well, what else does Chestnut do? It has Belly Drum. Now, this is also where things get weird for the Chestnut, because we are in a slower, bulkier meta for Generation 9. For the most part, we're kind of like seeing it speed up with all the legendary Pokemon being added in, and also Paradox Pokemon. Like, you just bring Encore Iron Bundle, and you shut down all the tanks anyways. So, some weirdness going on, but... There's been like a weird world to where, yeah, a lot of the big tanky threats are under 64 speed, but unfortunately Chestnut's 64 speed is just not good. It doesn't creep into like 85. You know, if you creep into the 80s on a tank Pokemon, you're outspeeding everything, so you just like hard win the tank matchups. If Chestnut just had like a weird speed for no reason, it would actually be so much better because then like you just get the belly drum, Citrus Berry, you're at 75%, you're bulky enough to like take a hit, and then you're just one-shotting everything on Drain Punch and getting all your health back. And then you take a hit, one shot, take a hit, one shot, win the game. Terrifying. GG easy. Then I was also kind of like looking at what you want. Like, yo, this thing gets Earthquake. All right, 100 base power move. Okay, we have a problem with Flying type Pokemon. Thunder Punch, GG easy. Coverage calculator is kind of weird because even though we have three offensive moves, some Pokemon are still going to resist us. Not good that Landorus eats our lunch. But then a lot of these other Pokemon just aren't in the game or aren't usable, so... Kind of weird trading on the Landorus, and depending on the moveset, Landorus doesn't threaten us with any kind of crazy moves. But we also get a lot of super effective hits. Now, I was thinking, okay, like, Earthquake is just there for power. Thunder Punch is low power, non-stab, super effective moves, pretty much. But we're going Belly Drum, so that kind of doesn't matter. We should just be going for the best coverage. And if we're going for, like, neutral hits, then the amount of super effectives doesn't really matter either. So let's go for that. We go Drain Punch, Iron Head Crunch. Is this what we want. So we have Drain Punch, we got Crunch, we have Iron Head, and less super effective hits, but we hit everything. So this might be the play, but also same idea. We go Citrus Berry, and as for the EVs, the speed is kind of weird. You do want the even hit points at level 50, so that's also going to be kind of weird on these EVs right here. That way, we Belly Drum, we go to half, Citrus Berry, we're at 75%. Hopefully, we can make this work somehow, but it's just too much setup, because yeah, like yeah, they outspeed us, we belly drum, that means like we took a hit. So even if we took like a 40% hit, we belly drum, citrus berry, we're at 30, 
percent like 35 percent they hit us again and we get ko'd so we don't like have a way of sustaining unless we somehow leverage a free belly drum turn but if we do like i said the dream is you go terror fighting and then you just drain punch one shot everything and get it back and that's also why it looks weird on the evs to where wait no attack investment does that work Yes, it does, because no attack investment means we neutrally one-shot 95-95, and that's before we even get into Terra fighting. So we can use this to preserve our Terra for something else on our team, because we're just one-shotting everything on Drain Punch anyways. And it also means we get to go into full defensive investment, which means somehow, maybe, against physical attackers, we can actually survive enough to do the Belly Drum into a Drain Punch, because we're just that bulky, and if we do some kind of like Terra shenanigans where the fighting comes into play for us, or even like a neutral hit, like if we turn super into neutral on Terra fighting, we just might get it against a physical attacker. And if we can get to a high enough level of hit points, full invested 88 into a non-super, like non-craziest special attack, we might survive and then we also might get the KO back. So Chestnut has its usability right here. It's kind of, kind of crazy. Also, Chestnut's move pool is just ridiculously deep. You might be thinking, oh, this is just like the National Dex move set on Chestnut and you didn't change it to Generation 9. Wrong. Battle Stadium Singles, Regulation D, and it just knows all of that stuff. It's a Pokemon that learns Pain Split. How does that happen outside of Tutors? Chestnut has it. This Pokemon gets infinity moves, which is really weird for a modern Pokemon that's just playing in Generation 9. We also have the Iron Defense if we want it but bulk up drain punch that's a classic with the leech seed and then again just like terra into fighting because fighting doesn't have a lot of weaknesses and then we can terra into fighting and after one bulk up we very strong on those drain punches we have like the leech seed sustain and the pokemon just works and then we crunch out the coverage and huh like is there something here and because we're bulking up we just go like max special offense max hit points and we get there I would even think special defense nature. Hopefully we don't get obliterated by everything. As for the item, leftovers, maybe citrus berry. That burst healing on the citrus berry as you're bulking up could be pretty good. And then whenever we finally see moringa berry and key berry, like special defense on this Pokemon as you're bulking up into combos where it's like you eat a special hit, you go bulk up, moringa berry activates, you survive, you can like drain punch back. Maybe there's something there. Being very reliant on the Terra Fighting, which is one of your base types, does mean you have some weaknesses, so just have, have like a Steel-type Pokemon. That way, Fairy, Flying, and Psychic Pokemon don't do anything to you, and you just like Chestnut, Steel, Pokemon, Core, and somehow win the game. And this Pokemon also gets a lot of other nonsense. We got Iron Defense, we got Synthesis, we got Taunt, we got Pain Split. I don't know, man. Do you run like Taunt, Synthesis, Leech Seed, just like anti set up annoyance pokemons where like you're always forcing out switches and like healing a little bit on chip or, or something and then you can also like leftovers behind that and just make pokemon very uncomfortable chestnut gets an outrageous amount of stuff and just barely enough stats to work with and when you remove its weaknesses i think it's actually a pretty good pokemon now i personally don't know my place in all of this because chestnut seems like a pokemon i would run but I think there's also like dedication to a Pokemon that is needed to get the most out of it. You have to want to break a Pokemon to actually be very proficient at it and then like almost master the Pokemon itself. And I feel like I don't have that in me, but I think it's very possible for anyone to like put these puzzle pieces together with the right team composition, with the right response to what's going on in the meta and actually find a good amount of Chestnut success, like B plus tier Pokemon. Chestnut might actually be like an A minus tier Pokemon right now, which is pretty crazy. And it could also maybe pull some like wild shenanigans and change up doubles because you do have some extra stuff. You get the wide guard, you get the quick guard, and then you just have like all of this extra utility. Now Fluttermane's kind of like winning everything. So maybe you just Terra into like you Terra steal Chestnut and then you do things. And I don't know. Maybe it's the game's most annoying support Pokemon. Maybe it's actually like the secret carry threat on a team somewhere, somehow. It's uh, It's got a lot to work with. And like I said, once you mitigate the type weaknesses or just like find a way to play around it better through team building theory and modernization of Pokemon ideas and then looking at like how the damage interacts, it's it has enough to just kind of offset. Like that 107 lands in that weird realm where it's like, yeah, 
I don't have to invest depending on how much I'm boosting. And if I do invest, I can still get enough tankiness out of it and just like two shot everything because that's how 107 works. So there we go, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.